Ace at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Be advised, stay out of the general area of Burton Hills Road to find back the shooter. My son and I survived a mass shooting over the summer. I am in Tennessee on a family vacation. We have to do more to stop gun violence. It's ripping our communities apart, ripping the soul of this nation, ripping at the very soul of the nation. And we, we have to do more to protect our schools so they aren't turned into prisons. The fallout continues after the latest school shooting in America. This morning, what authorities are revealing about the shooting at Covenant School in Nashville. It killed three nine-year-old students and three adults. And more survival stories are emerging after tornadoes flattened homes and buildings in parts of the South. Back here at home outside with live cam, breezy and cooler this morning. Are there any showers out there as we begin our Tuesday? Mike is standing to our right. and We'll talk to him in a sec. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 28th of March. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good Monday and things did cool off quite a bit. They did. And I noticed a, a, you might say it's a wind out there oh, this yeah. morning. Yeah, and it's going to stay windy all day long. We've got some pretty good wind gusts mm -hmm. uh, this morning and pulling in some drier air. So that's why it's a little more refreshing when you uh, walk outside. We did have some storms. There were a couple of them that got a little bit uh, on the, the rough side last night over there around Edwards County and off to the east. And there are a couple of leftovers this morning, but one thing to take note of it is clearer the the lights off in the distance are a little more distinct the lens may be slightly out of focus though but uh, yeah we've got this dry air that has moved on in here there's a few leftover showers uh, in some of our eastern counties they'll continue to work their way off to the east and then further off to the west we've got a couple of these showers right there along the Rio Grande so one or two of the leftovers this morning but now with the dry air in place any rain uh, probably is going to be evaporating before it ever reaches the surface surface some of those lighter showers the heavier ones yes but they're going to continue to kind of dwindle out as the morning rolls on 68 degrees so we're still well above normal temperatures are similar to what they were at this time yesterday but we'll drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours and dew points those have really dropped down remember yesterday was a fairly muggy morning when we had those dew points well up in the 60s well now we're in the 40s and 50s and it will continue to dry out with those winds out of the north at 10 15 miles per hour then we've got the gusts, 22 at Stinson, 16 Valverde, 18 there at Lost Maples. Again, it's going to be pretty blustery all day long. Oak is on the high side. It has went up yesterday quite a bit from the previous day's reading. A uh, moderate amount of mold, little bits of pecan and pine. Temperatures drop down another 4 degrees out there at the airport. Again, a leftover shower here and there, but it's not going to be uh, an issue this morning. But the wind, yes, out of the north, 15, 25 miles per hour and gusty. And then later on today, windy. 70, so we will be below normal by good five, six degrees. And those gusty winds, uh, at times gusting 35, close to 40 miles per hour. A couple more showers going to be developing then later on this afternoon, then going into tonight. And we'll have another rain chance actually down the road, another front down the road. And we'll check out what's happening for the first weekend of April coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thanks, Mike. Four people are in custody this morning after a shooting on the city's west side, leaving one man dead. Now, according to San Antonio Police, it happened last night just before 9 at an apartment complex in the 1100 block of Lombrano Street near Service Street and Elmendorf. Police say a fight led to a man in his 30s getting shot once in the chest. EMS responded to that scene and said, pronounced him dead. A case that crew at the scene also captured the moment multiple individuals exited the unit and surrendered to officers. Have you seen this woman? She's been missing since January 18th, and the Bear County Sheriff's Office is asking if you know where she is. She's 50-year-old Cindy Stevens. She was last seen on Rainbow Basin Street in Converse, the far northeast side. She's about 5'5", with blue eyes and brown hair. We're told she does have a medical condition. If you know where she might be, you're asked to call BCSO. The fallout continues after the school shooting at the Covenant School in Nashville. Three nine-year-old students are dead along with three adults. Police say the shooter, 20-year-old Audrey Hale, a former student at the school, was killed during a shootout with local police. Officers say the suspect had pre-planned the shooting by drawing detailed maps of the school. They believe Hale shot through one of the doors to get into the school. You're seeing that video right there. The deadly shooting, just the latest in a horrific trend. According to the Gun Violence Archive, this is the 129th mass shooting in the United States this year. And State Senator Roland Gutierrez issued a statement saying in part, quote, the Covenant School shooting is at another tragic reminder of the urgent need for common sense gun safety laws in our country. 
The fact that our children are not safe in our schools is flat out unacceptable. We as elected officials must take bold action to prevent gun violence and protect our communities. There's no place for this in the greatest country on earth. It saddens me deeply to have to express this sentiment time and time again, end quote. Well, this morning we're hearing more remarkable stories of survival following that historic tornado outbreak that devastated entire communities in the state of Mississippi. And now as ABC's Lionel Moyes reports, the region is bracing for more storms this week. This morning, rescue crews will resume the daunting task of digging through flattened homes and buildings in Mississippi after the weekend tornado outbreak that claimed at least 21 lives in the state. This is the inside of a massive water tower that snapped in half and then spilled all over the ground here. And you can get a sense of the damage from above and the monumental task required to rebuild this town. We now have a picture of one of the youngest victims, two-year-old Aubrey Green. Another life lost, Ethan Herndon, whose family calls him a gentle giant. He died along with his one-year-old daughter, Riley, when the tornado slammed into their home. The family of Wanda Early says she died while driving to work. Her daughter calls her an amazing person. People don't have anything. At least 27 tornadoes tore through five states, but Mississippi bore the brunt, one twister leaving a trail of destruction 59 miles long. More survival stories are emerging. Sonia Barnes says she grabbed her two-month-old grandbaby and took cover in the bathroom. I was just thinking, how was I going to protect her? But you put the baby in your jacket? Yes, my shirt. In the town of Blackhawk, the 100-year-old community center is destroyed, but it's the little things left behind that bring hope. Like this piano waterlogged. But local residents say that piano, like this community, can and will be rebuilt. And now forecasters are warning of severe thunderstorms possible in the south on Thursday. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. North Korea is claiming that it simulated a tactical nuclear missile launch Monday. According to state media, it was to demonstrate, quote, firing with a nuclear air explosion striking mode, end quote. Two ground to ground ballistic missiles were launched with non nuclear dummy warheads. According to state media, they intentionally blasted 500 meters above the target. On Monday, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the projectiles landed in waters off the coast of the Korean Peninsula. Fort Hood is getting renamed. A ceremony will take place in May to rename the Army base after General Richard Edward Cavazos. Now, he made military history in 1982 when he became the Army's first Hispanic four-star general. Cavazos served in the Army for 33 years and was known for his leadership skills. He died back in 2017. Fort Hood is currently named after Lieutenant General John Bell Hood. He was a Confederate leader during the Civil War. Fort Hood is one of several military bases undergoing a name change after a congressional committee recommended removing Confederate names from military bases. Tuesday morning, we're just getting started right now. It's 438, 68 degrees. Coming up next, ahead of tomorrow's game against the Utah Jazz, why Spurs head coach Greg Popovich is reminiscing about his former point guard, Derek White. Checking traffic right now, and I don't know of any trouble spots right now, but things look good at I-10 and ProBank. Cross your fingers for a smooth morning commute. And significantly cooler out there compared to yesterday morning. We're going to be checking in with Mike very soon to see how long the cool weather will stick around. Before the Spurs lost at the Celtics this week, head coach Greg Popovich held his normal pregame press conference. He was asked about a number of topics, including from point guard Derek White. Spurs drafted him in the first round back in 2017, then traded him to Boston in February of 2022. Pop said Derek is a very special case in that over time he figured out that he belongs. Pop has nothing but love for D. White. In development, he was just outstanding. He spent a lot of time before and after practices and you know, summer summer leagues and uh, learning how to play. Uh, you know, he he had the size. You can see, you know, he had the the size at that position uh, to do it. And the immediate thing that you could see was that he had an instinctive nose for the game. He understood how to play. Uh, most NBA players don't know how to play. Uh, he did. Pop and the Spurs will host the Jazz tomorrow night at 7. It's the Spurs' last home game this season at the AT&T Center. 
It's official. Texas hired Rodney Terry's head coach of the men's basketball team. Texas men's basketball tweet and our guy is our guy. The 26th head coach of the Texas Longhorns is Rodney Terry. It's a reported five year deal worth $15.3 million. He was an assistant for UT from 2002 to 2011 before leaving for other opportunities. Returned to Texas in 2021 as an assistant and then back in December was promoted to interim head coach after Chris Beard was suspended, then fired under Terry. The Horns went 22 and eight, won the Big 12 championship tournament and advanced to the Elite Eight where they lost 88-81 to Miami on Sunday. During post, he was asked what will stand out about this particular group. I think just the way this group handled adversity, you know, they, they, they were probably the most challenged team of any team uh, in the country this season. And, uh, you know, they just stayed the course every single day. Um, you know, we, uh, we stayed in the top 10 all year long. Uh, and uh, it's a testament to these guys and, and, and their chemistry that they had all season long and playing for one another. They were truly a team. Congratulations, Coach. Former Texas basketball players Kevin Durant and T.J. Ford both tweeted their happiness with UT promoting Terry. And that's a look at sports. Yeah, that's very cool, the tweets. Congrats again. Time now, 443 and 67 degrees for now. Car insurance is one of those things that you have and hope you never have to use, but are you overpaying? Coming up next, what you can do to not spend as much. Taylor Swift fans in court demanding change after the botched ticket rollout for Swift's Eras Tour. We'll tell you how many have joined the lawsuit so far. And welcome back. It's 446. Taylor Swift fans are suing Ticketmaster for the botched online ticket sales to the singer's latest tour. ABC's Mola Lingi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, taking on Ticketmaster. It's me. Taylor Swift fans in court demanding change after the botched ticket rollout for Swift's Eras Tour. Nearly 340 fans joining the lawsuit. As long as this game needs to be played, we're ready to play this game because the country's ready for a change, the plaintiffs are ready for a change, and they're entitled to a change. The lawsuit filed in December claims Ticketmaster intentionally charged sky-high fees and sold their tickets to scalpers. Live Nation apologizing during a Senate Judiciary hearing in January for the frustrating customer experience it attributed to bot attacks. We need to do better and we will do better. So what could this mean for buying concert tickets in the future? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mola Lenghi, ABC News, Los Angeles. The price of car insurance is in overdrive right now. Some are getting bills in the hundreds of dollars higher, and it doesn't necessarily matter if you've been accident for free for years. Just happened to me, too. I know. However, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz has some ways to save. Louis Morgan was in for sticker shock. That's just ridiculous. I don't know how people are surviving these days. He was already paying $317 a month to insure a Tesla for himself and a Honda for his 23-year-old son. Then... That same company went up over, it was over $600 a month. The auto insurers are getting hit by the inflationary pressures that the rest of the economy are seeing, um, perhaps more so. Michael Berry with the Insurance Information Institute says for every dollar many insurers took in, they paid out more than a dollar in claims. Citing pricey repairs, more accidents, and an increase in theft, insurance companies' rates are up about 14 percent from last year. Morgan shopped around and ended up bundling his car and homeowner's insurance, now paying about $400 a month. I'm going to get like 15 percent back or something. Bundling is one way you may reduce your bill. Barry also suggests reducing your coverage if your car is older and raising your deductible. A lot of people are driving around with a $500 deductible, but they're not going to file a claim unless it's $1,000 or more in damage. But Barry recommends keeping comprehensive coverage. That covers so many things that occur, vandalism, theft, flooded vehicle, um, so uh, uh, trees falling on cars. Next, see if your insurer offers tracking devices or apps that can help lower your bill. And be sure to ask about all available discounts, such as low mileage. There are also discounts for certain professions and even for students with good grades. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good news, Steph. Don't see any accidents on the text top page this morning. That's good. Well, I don't see any problems out there on the TransGuide cameras as well. So. Good news so far.
but we'll check in with Stephen Cavazos later. And for now, we'll check with you, Mike. I was just tapping my fingers. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, we're just we're opening the floor up we, to you. We don't, we don't have the mist and drizzle around no. this morning. Not to say that was to blame for right. stuff that we had yesterday and, the day, and last week. But also, it is windy out there. And it's going to stay pretty windy. So just kind of, you know, hang on to, especially if you got a van or a truck or something like that. Um, this week is not going to be any sort of a kind of a prize winner, if you will. It's, it's going to be one of those where it's almost like weather do something. So today we'll have a lot of clouds around here. There will be a couple of showers here and there, but I wouldn't get really excited about the overall amount of rain we're going to be or not going to be getting, I should say. All right, I love this, the caption of the, oh darn, he's kind of covered up by that banner, but right there is the duck. Living a duck's life on Woodlawn Lake. Kind of makes you a little envious of the duck. Thank you, Mr. McClellan, for that one. And as you saw in that picture, a lot of clouds out there. We have plenty of clouds. You're going to see a limited sunshine this week, basically staying with plenty of clouds hanging around here. There's the few leftover showers well up to the northeast and off to the east from that uh, the latest front, which has moved on through the area. And then there are a few of them well out there just across the river in Mexico. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. They're not making uh, tracks very fast, kind of sitting there for right now. A couple of little scattered sprinkles out ahead of that and there's another disturbance coming in here from the southwest coming across the mountains of Mexico later on today which is going to give us another chance for some rain. So 68 degrees in town still like I said 15 10 15 degrees above normal low 60s in the hill country that slightly cooler air will continue to move in here so we will we'll drop down somewhat but with windy conditions and cloudy skies it's not like temperatures just plummet and those aren't the ingredients you want to have to really get the coldest what you could potentially get because we've got our dew points down to 50 right now. In theory, we could get down there. We're not going to anyway, but it is much drier, so it's much more comfortable when you step outside. Dew points are down a good uh, 10, 15, 16 degrees compared to this time yesterday. So that much drier air is moving in here on these northerly winds, 10, 15 miles per hour. Again, we've got some gusts to 22 at Stinson. It is going to stay very blustery throughout the rest of today. Temperatures will slowly creep downward. There's the 10% for a leftover here or there, one or two of them out to the west. We'll drop down to 64, make it up to mid upper 60s at noon. Not a huge warm up, very windy today, only make it up to 70. So we are going to be on the below normal side. And here's computer models. So a lot of clouds around this morning, you know, leftover sprinkle. And notice how that out to the west is not really moving all that much. Then as the afternoon rolls on, we'll start to see a few of these showers trying to kind of come on in here. and. Models want to try and bring things in by roughly dinner time. A couple of showers, uh, maybe a thunderstorm or two. Those will sort of work their way across the area later on this evening. Tomorrow looks like it's just going to be basically cloudy, no rain around here. And then we go into Thursday and we will start off with a couple of uh, sprinkles around here as the humidity starts to work its way back into the picture. So the forecast today, you know, again, a leftover sprinkle or two this morning, 67 at noon, windy conditions, and then a high today of 70. Still very windy. A couple of showers going to start to develop. We'll have a few of those around tonight. Then tomorrow, again, basically cloudy skies, but it's just going to be on the cool side tomorrow. 65, that's it. A good 10 degrees on average below normal. Then up to 78 on Thursday. Back to the 80s. We'll have a couple of showers, thunderstorms Thursday. Another front's going to move through here. So very basically hot and humid Friday. We get a slight break in the humidity Saturday that's going to come back. That's the other thing with this low humidity around here, like on Saturday. I mean, I kind of doubt if there's going to be a shower that makes it all the way down to the ground, but then uh, back to 83 on Sunday for Palm Sunday and then warm Monday. Warm days ahead. Yeah, so little bits of rain here and there. It's, it's going to be kind of like, OK, come on. If you're going to say cloudy, <laughs> right. do something. Commit. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. It's about uh, five till right now, 67 degrees. And did you check out the latest John Wick movie this weekend? If you still can't get enough, up next, a first look at two planned spinoffs. Welcome back. Get ready for some John Wick spinoffs. Plus, it's a big day for Grey's Anatomy. For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. This hit goes out to you, Mr. Wick. With John Wick Chapter 4 bowing with a franchise record 73.5 million bucks, audiences clearly haven't gotten enough of the Keanu Reeves character. Luckily, the world of John Wick lives on in two already planned spinoffs. The Continental debuts on Peacock later this year, telling the origin story of Ian McShane's hotel manager, Winston Scott, while Ana de Armas stars in the film Ballerina, out next year, which will see Reeves, McShane, and others reprise their characters. 
Grey's Anatomy is now the longest-running primetime medical drama in American TV history. ABC just renewed it for a 20th season. Star Ellen Pompeo left the show in the mid-season premiere, but she'll be back one more time for the season 19 finale in May. Congratulations, Daniel Radcliffe. He and longtime girlfriend Aaron Dark are expecting their first child together. And Lady Gaga turns 37 Tuesday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 458, 67 degrees. New video this morning shows the moments leading up to the deadly school shooting in Nashville. Just ahead, what police say they found overnight at the shooter's home. Harlandale ISC is closing four schools. Just ahead, what's next for students, teachers, and parents? And a quick look at the roads with Transguide. See a little bit of flashing lights over there, but I think they're traveling lights. We're going to check in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man is carjacked on San Antonio's west side overnight. Just ahead, what happened when he confronted his attackers inside a pawn shop? I was literally moved to tears to see this and the kids as they were being ushered out of the building. This And let's go ahead and look out there with the live cam. It is 67 degrees this morning, a little cooler than yesterday morning. And we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect today. Maybe it'll get warmer. And much more on what we're learning about the Nashville shooting coming up in this hour of GMSA. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, March 28th. Hey, thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good week so far. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. I know things will change a little bit. Yeah, we had that front move through right on schedule uh, in the overnight hours. It did produce a couple of stronger storms here and there. There's a few leftover uh, showers. Going to show you that in just a second. And 67 degrees. We're still 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And notice a couple of different things, though. First of all, the bottom number, dew point 49. The air is really, really dried out. We only have 52% relative humidity. And also, wind is out of the north 15 miles per hour, and it's gusting from there and it's going to stay blustery all day long and then we only get to 70. Now the normal average high temperature right now is mid 70 so we are definitely on the cool side today as well as a little sneak peek as well as tomorrow even cooler. The aquifer yesterday dropped down four tenths of a foot and the allergens a lot of oak out there. We are getting definitely into the heart of the oak season. Mold is moderate, little bits of pine as well as pecan. So here's what's showing up on radar and again a few of the leftover showers that uh, came in with that front overnight. Those will continue to move off to the east right there just to the north of LaGrange and those they will push off further out there and let me just jump back here very quickly and show you out to the west. We still have a couple of these showers right there along the Rio Grande and this is sort of the next disturbance that's going to be coming on in here but it's going to kind of hang out out to the west a little bit and then want to slide on in here later on this afternoon. Mid and uh, lower 60s around much of the area, but then we do still have some 70s right there in Divine as well as Stinson, 67 in Seguin. Everybody's got drier air, so it's a lot more comfortable. You definitely notice it when you step outside this morning. Breezy though, hang on to your hat, uh, 10, 15, close to 20 mile per hour winds sustained, and then the gust to 21 out there at the airport, 19 Canyon Lake, and it's going to be blustery all day long. So we've got a couple leftover showers, windy, 70, and then a few more more showers are going to be redeveloping and moving on in here from the west late this afternoon, dinner time, early evening hours, and those will be lasting pretty much in through the, the evening. Some leftovers tomorrow, and then basically just cloudy and cool tomorrow, mid 60s. That's it, and which would be nice. And then Thursday, we do start to see the humidity come back on in here, so some morning mist and fog. A couple of more showers or even a storm, and it is going to be warmer on Thursday, and then we'll continue to warm up. Now, there's another front that's going to get rid of of some humidity temporarily as we go on into the weekend, but overall the weekend is going to be on the warm side and plenty of clouds around here. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Mr. Cabasas. What's going on on the highways and byways? Well, a happy Tuesday to you, Mike. Uh, things are moving along just fine. We're starting our Tuesday off like any ordinary morning. No issues to report, at least just yet, but let's get a quick look around town. There are some of those uh, traveling lights, as Steph put it. Uh, thankfully, no issues are going to slow drivers down in the north or southbound lanes of 35, uh, but we 
we know that we have active construction. In fact, right now, that is all that TechSide is reporting. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the newscast, but here's some relief for you guys. We have plenty of green on the screen. We had plenty of issues, though, over the last few days, so let's hope that we can continue our morning like this. Uh, thankfully, it's smooth sailing for anyone that has to hit the roadways in the next few minutes or so. Uh, but if you're traveling in, take your time. There's no need to rush if you're traveling along I-37 northbound from Pleasanton. It's about a 28-minute commute for you, so still pretty pleasant there. US 90 eastbound, it should take about 30 minutes to the Alamo City, and that arrival from Lytle should be within about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound. But let's get it back here along 35 at Walsham. Again, things are moving along without any trouble. We'll watch the roads closely and have updates on some of those road closures you may want to avoid. That'll be coming up a little bit later on. Mark, Steph. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a carjacking turned into a shooting overnight. San Antonio police say it happened in the 7800 block of West Military just before midnight on the west side near Timber Creek Drive. Police say the victim was initially carjacked and managed to find his vehicle at a nearby pawn shop. He went inside to confront the suspects. SAPD says one of them pulled out a gun and shot at the victim, hitting him in the arm. The victim was taken to the hospital. The suspects ran away. So far, no arrests have been made. Schools will be closing. Harlandale ISD will be closing four elementary schools. The vote passed four to three last night. Now the school board listed, excuse me, listened to public comments for more than an hour, and the board voted on option B, which is the repurposing of Columbia Heights, Morrill, Rayburn, and Carroll Bell Elementary Schools. Many people were upset about the pending decision. The board member expressed the benefit this move could bring. The potential merging of resources will allow us to invest in people and programs that can enhance the opportunities that we can provide for our students. In turn, that investment in our students will trickle down where they can excel and eventually contribute to our Harlandel community as a whole. No details were given about how the schools will be repurposed for now. Each of the schools closing are operating on at least 50% capacity. Now, Harlandale ISD isn't the only school district having these discussions about school closures. Just last week, the South San ISD Board of Trustees voted in favor of closing three campuses in its district, Kazan Middle School, Athens Elementary, and Kindred Elementary. Now to the new images from the deadly school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. And we want to warn you, the surveillance images from that school are disturbing. President Biden has ordered flags at half staff for the six victims, three of them young children. As ABC's Lindsay Watts reports overnight, investigators say they found more weapons at the shooter's home. This morning, newly released surveillance video showing the moments leading up to the deadly school shooting in Nashville. The shooter firing through a glass door armed with two assault type weapons and a pistol seen here in pictures released by police. Once inside, authorities say Audrey Hale shot and killed six people, including three children. I was literally moved to tears to see this and the kids as they were being ushered out of the building. The young victims, nine years old, they're identified as Evelyn Dickhouse, Haley Scruggs, and William Kinney. The head of the school, Katherine Kuntz, was also killed, along with teacher Cynthia Peak and custodian Mike Hill. We just need to embrace those that are grieving because we grieve with them. Police patrol cars outside the school were left riddled with bullet holes. Authorities say Hale fired at officers from a second story window. According to police, two officers ran toward the gunfire, shooting and killing Hale just 14 minutes after the first 911 call. There's multiple victims down inside the school. Shooter is down as now as well. Authorities say they strongly believe Hale, described as a 28-year-old female who identifies as transgender, was a former student at the private Christian school. Overnight, police say they found more guns and evidence at Hale's home. A motive remains under investigation. Gun violence is the number one cause of death for children in America, recently surpassing car crashes. In Washington, advocates for gun reform once again demanding tougher measures. Oh, this person had two AR-15s and a handgun. You don't need this to go hunting. Uh, you don't need that to protect your family. Congressman Tim Burchett, who represents Knoxville, Tennessee, called the shooting horrible, but says there is no need to ban assault weapons. I don't think you're going to stop the gun violence. The common thread is you've got somebody who's mentally ill and, and evil. 
Police say Hale prepared for yesterday's attack with detailed maps and also left behind writings that will be part of the investigation. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Nashville. 509, 66 degrees. And many of us use Microsoft Teams for work. Just ahead, the changes Microsoft has made so that the app runs faster and easier. Don't lose your Medicaid coverage. Some changes are just around the corner. Up next, what you need to know beforehand. I'm looking out there with a live can starting a little cool at 66 degrees. Mike says today we'll feel the wind and that will be the issue and we're going to check in with them later to see what we can expect the rest of the week. 13 minutes past the hour. A heads up for Medicaid recipients. Continuous eligibility ends this Friday. That means you have just a few days left to re-enroll or risk losing your benefits. All families have to reapply to determine their eligibility based on changes to federal law. Some Medicaid recipients could see a reduction in their benefits or may no longer qualified. Those currently enrolled should have received a yellow packet in the mail last month. Some common mistakes on the application is uh, not filling it out entirely. The application is 20 pages, so um, it can be time consuming, it can be confusing. Um, so we are, again, certified uh, to be able to assist with applications. The Alamo Area Council of Governments offers assistance with applications. You can also fill out the application online. We have added a link and the phone number to call at kset.com. 514, 66 degrees. And you may have noticed that your iPhone recently upgraded. Well, we're going to tell you what's new and which emojis are now included. And we'll tell you why Google is shutting down its Fitbit's popular social features. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is now even softer, so you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll. But enjoy the go with Charmin. Mmm, popcorn. Danger disaster, darling. We need polygrip before crispy popcorn. Let's fix this. Polygrip Power Hold and Seal gives our strongest hold and five times food seal. If your mouth could talk, it would ask for polygrip. Finding a subtly sweet tea is easy. Nice, right? Huh. Pure leaf, subtly sweet. But saying no in a subtly sweet way? Impressive. Mm -hmm. Takes practice. But absolutely not. Absolutely not. Pure leaf, lower sugar. Just the right amount of sweetness. 517, Microsoft is out with this new redesigned Teams app with some big improvements, they say. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, improvements to Microsoft's Teams. The company says it has redesigned the app, making it up to two times faster than the previous version. Microsoft says Teams now offers smoother scrolling while using 50% less memory, and it will support AI features. Google has shut down Fitbit's social features. Monday was the final day for challenges, adventures, and open groups. Fitbit said the features had limited use, and they were being removed to streamline the app. The move also means earn trophies are also gone. And finally, Apple just expanded its emoji collection. The new operating system adds 21 new emojis, including a goose, a moose, maracas, and three new colored hearts. Cellular calls also have voice isolation to block out ambient noise, and there's also a series of bug fixes. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon Alley. Have a great day. 518. <laughs> Hope you're having a good morning so far. Uh, the, you know, the weather was better for me, at least, this morning when oh, I yeah. stepped outside. Yeah. Much more refreshing, much more pleasant when you uh, step outside felt, this morning. It felt great. You know, we talked about some of that mist that we saw on the roadway yesterday. Yeah. And, and it's not clear if that mist led to any of the problems that we saw. There was a, uh, a plethora of issues out on the roadway, but there will be plenty of construction taking place right now. First, let's talk about what's happening here along US 90 on the west side of San Antonio. Uh, remember, I mentioned this yesterday. This is actually going to start around nine this morning, but those tech stock crews tend to get out there a little bit earlier. So make sure that you watch out because their work will take it all, take them all the way up until the end of the week and uh, it should wrap up around three in the afternoon. What we'll see out there is a single eastbound uh, lane closure from FM 471 to Metzler Lane. So always plan your commute ahead of time. But as I said, morning starting off a lot better here on the roadways. You can see plenty of green on the screen, uh, but a lot of that active construction. So 
be on the lookout for text crews. We're not detecting any major problems at this hour, but that can quickly change. So as you get a look there at Transguide 37 at Hot Wells, things are moving. They're still quiet, but uh, I didn't see any mist out there on the roadways this morning, Mike. No, we there are a couple leftover sprinkles here and there uh, around the area, most of well off to the east, and then we're going to check out radar well off to the west. It's a picture just happy. I mean, that's a happy dog. That face, those bright eyes, and sitting out in the blue bonnets. Boy, you can't ask for a prettier picture on that one. Big old smile. Oh, I know. Love, love, that, love that. And I love his name, too. Carlitos. Carlitos. Floppy ears. Thank you so much for the case at Connect picture. And love those blue bonnet pictures folks have been sending in too. And all the wildflowers that are in bloom around the area. All right, this picture is a lot clearer this morning over there at 10 at 410. You know, yesterday there was just that kind of fuzzy haze off in the distance, but at least we can see all of the lights out there along the horizon because we've got much, much drier air in place. Now, here's what's going on on radar. Down just to the west of Catula and down to the south of do a couple of those showers. Notice how they're moving kind of down to the south and a few of them just sort of lingering in and around Del Rio, Valverde County, even a couple of thunderstorms out there. So that's the latest little disturbance, which is going to kind of hang out for a minute and then start to slide on in here late this afternoon. So low to mid 60s. We have dropped down. Oh, good. Three, four degrees since earlier this morning as this cooler air tries to move on in here. Now, of course, with windy conditions, with cloudy skies, those are not the ingredients you like to see to get the coldest air possible with the radiational cooling, as we call it. So we won't get as cool as we could this morning. We do have much, much drier air. Dew points are down in the 40s, even some low 50s around here. A good 15, 20 degrees cooler or lower than what they were yesterday. Wind out of the north, 15 miles per hour on average, 10, 15. And then we have the gust to 21 at the airport. It's going to stay blustery all day long. We'll be seeing some gusts. Uh, sustained winds, 15, 25 miles per hour. Gusts, 30, 35 or even higher than that at times. There's the 10% chance for a leftover little sprinkle. Some of those out to the west. There's a few way off to the east that are moving on out of the area. And then basically just cloudy skies, 67 degrees today at noon and a high temperature up to 70. And we'll start to see a couple more showers developing late this afternoon going in toward dinner time. So here's computer model. Nothing really going on for the next couple of hours. Those leftover little sprinkles. There's that rain out there to the west. And again, that sort of just sort of sits out there all the way through morning. And then by afternoon, it starts to work its way into portions of the hill country and a couple of showers trying to pop up here and there. We will start to see a few more as we approach dinner time and that's moving across the area. Even a clap or two of thunder can't be ruled out, and that's going to be the situation into this evening. And even a few leftovers are going to be possible early tomorrow morning, but then basically just cloudy skies and even cooler tomorrow. Here's a satellite picture, and one thing to take note of is this big flow coming in here out of the southwest and coming across Mexico from the uh, Pacific Ocean. That's all the moisture, and that's going to be keeping a whole bunch of clouds around here all the way pretty much through the entire forecast period. We're not going to see a heck of a lot of sunshine over the next uh, five to seven days. 67 degrees today at noon, windy conditions, and then later on this afternoon, still breezy, 70. So we're going to be on average five degrees below normal around the area. A couple of showers going to start to develop around here, and then we go into tomorrow. It's going to be a cooler morning, 52 degrees, and we only make it up to 65. So it's going to be maybe a jacket throughout the day tomorrow, and then a few more showers around on Thursday, even a couple of thunderstorms up to 78. Back to normal. 80s then through the weekend, and we have another front moving on through here, which is going to trim the humidity. I don't really know about rain with this, you know, a 20% chance on Saturday, but the air is going to be so dry, kind of doubted around here. But one thing, plenty of clouds this weekend, although it will be pleasant for the first weekend of April and to celebrate a birthday, even on April Fool's Day, if, the, if, the, if the shoe fits or if the candle fits. It's yeah, a National it. Stephanie Cerna Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, Thank which you. we really celebrate locally. 524, 66 degrees. Avatar The Way of Water is now on digital. Up next, a first look at a casting bonus feature that looks at how actor Jack Champion was chosen for a pivotal role in the film. Just about 527, Hollywood encompasses both the biggest blockbusters and the smallest but mightiest teams of filmmakers. CNN's David Daniel looks at both in today's Hollywood Minute.
Jack Champion, aptly named, because he, he is kind of our champion in a way. He's a kind of amazing young guy. Avatar The Way of Water is more than just its Oscar-winning visual effects. A casting bonus feature looks at how Jack Champion was chosen for the pivotal role of Spider, including a screen test with returning cast member Sigourney Weaver. It's part of more than three hours of bonus content in the film's digital release, available now. We need to see stories authentically told by people with disabilities in the romance genre because guess what we fall in love we fall out of love sometimes romance is the genre of this year's Easter Seals disability film challenge it's the tenth year of the challenge in which teams including people with disabilities create short films spotlighting disability and inclusion a record 95 films were submitted last year filming is underway for this year's challenge which runs through April 2nd more info at disabilityfilmchallenge.com in Hollywood I'm David David Daniel. 528, still 66 degrees. As parts of the country are getting clobbered with another major winter storm system, up next, how the Biden administration is preparing to help those impacted by the latest round of deadly tornadoes. After the Fed raised interest rates again, many are wondering how it could all impact their savings, credit cards, and investments. Up next, how to get the most out of those soaring rates. This morning, people dealing with the aftermath of vicious weather, where more than 20 people have died. They're in heaven right now. And I was told that they passed away in each other's arms. Just ahead, how the Biden administration is vowing assistance for those in need. Here at home, the cold front moved in and we're waking up cool to 66 degrees. We're going to check in with Mike to see how long the clouds will stick around. And a good morning to you. It's Tuesday, March 28th, and we have a traffic incident in New Braunfels that Stephen's going to talk about in just a moment. Yes, but for now, let's check in with the cool weather and the clouds. You know, it's funny how we're kind of, uh, I guess, conditioned with these warmer temperatures lately because we're still uh, almost 10 above normal right oh, now. Wow. Yeah, but it feels a whole lot better when you step outside because that front move through on schedule. We do have some drier air in place, so it is much, much more pleasant. Uh, you know, a light jacket might not be a bad idea uh, because especially kids standing at the bus stop this morning with these temperatures that are in the mid is mid and upper 60s right now, and then they will drop down a few more degrees. Dew points at 49. Plus, we got a fairly decent breeze out there this morning, and uh, that's going to be the situation throughout the day. Now, there are still a few uh, showers out here in Valverde County, even a couple of thunderstorms. There's one or two showers. Notice how those are sort of drifting down to the south there, just to the uh, west of Catula. This is going to kind of sit out here for a while, and then it's going to start to work its way in here by later on this afternoon. Afternoon. That's going to be our next round of a couple of showers and even a thunderstorm or two. And like I said, mid and lower 60s from the hill country. And then we've got some upper 60s and low 70s down in the southern portion of Bear County. Everybody's got this drier air. So again, you walk outside, it's like, ah, I can breathe. There's no humidity out there or much, much lower humidity and wind out of the north at uh, 10, 15 miles per hour and then some gusts to 21 out there at the airport. And it is going to stay fairly blustery throughout the day. Whole lot of oak yesterday's reading. Mold is moderate. The updated count comes out in a couple of hours, roughly 67 at noon and windy pretty much all day long. Northerly wind 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting at times 30, 35 miles per hour and out in the hill country even higher than that. And then a couple of showers going to start to develop late this afternoon and then going into tonight with a few showers and storms. And then tomorrow it is going to be even cooler. Our temperature right now is actually higher than what the high temperature is going to be tomorrow. We're going to take a look at the weekend coming up as well. Traffic Authority. All right, so you said 35 is that accident? 35 in New Braunfels. Mike, unfortunately, we do have a major crash reported in the area. I just spoke to our friends at Transcut. You can see there 35 at Walnut Avenue. We have several lanes of traffic that are blocked off at this hour. Let's see if we can get you to the map right real quick here. Just uh, before we start jumping around, 35 South and at Walnut Avenue is where that crash has been reported. And, and notice that there's a buildup already taking place out there. Unfortunately, this is in the southbound lane, so it's going to cause issues for anyone that may be trying to head into the Alamo City from New Braunfels this early in the morning. We'll take a look at those travel times in just a moment, but you can see again, those first responders have had their work cut out for them this morning, especially in that area. Giving you a wide look at the map, though, back here in town, there's no real 
big issue, but uh, areas that we're going to watch closely are going to be the, uh, the areas that we have here on our screen, particularly New Braunfels. And the reason why 35 South Bend will be a big issue is because it's one of the busiest corridors, as you know. And so we're seeing a 26 minute drive time right now. Nothing too bad just yet, but just remember several lanes are blocked off right now. We're getting ready to send a push alert, so make sure you have your case at mobile app downloaded with the notifications turned on 281 Southbound from Bulverde. While we're looking at these travel times, looks to be about the same 26 minutes to the Alamo City and about a 24 minute drive time along I 10 eastbound heading in from Bernie. But again, big problem here 35 at Woodland Avenue. Let's just take a look there where we have multiple first responders on the scene. It also looks like there may be some fire trucks out there as well. Uh, we're working to get some information from Transguide and we'll see what New Braunfels police uh, can tell us about this incident. But this is definitely going to impact your travel times, especially if you're heading into the downtown area from New Braunfels. We'll keep a close eye on it throughout the morning, guys. Stephen, thank you. We have some late breaking news. At least 39 people have died. 29 are hurt after an overnight fire at a migration center in Mexico's northern border city of Ciudad Juarez across from El Paso. The what he said the fire at the Office of National Migration Institute happened after they picked up 71 migrants from the streets of the city. So far, the cause of the fire or the victim's nationalities have not been released by authorities. We will continue to follow this breaking news story throughout the morning. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man's attempt to stand up to robbers has gone very wrong. He ended up in the hospital with a gunshot wound. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. Katrina, what happened? Well, according to police, the man who was shot also was the victim of an earlier carjacking and confronted the people who he caught with his stolen car. Well, police say they struck back by shooting him. Well, this happened just before midnight on West Military Drive, not far from Marbach Road. Police say the man who's in his 30s had been carjacked just down the street from that location. They say he saw his stolen car at the store, then went inside and told two men that police were on the way. Well, police say that's when one of those men pulled out a gun and fired at the victim, hitting him in his arm. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say those robbers ran away and left the stolen car behind, and they are still looking for them. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Severe weather causing havoc in several parts of the United States. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the southeast is dealing with the aftermath of confirmed tornadoes, while more rain and snow are striking the already drenched state of California. Parts of California are getting clobbered with another major winter storm system, which grew in strength over the Pacific Ocean. A wind advisory is in effect for more than 15 million people in California and Oregon through Tuesday, and the National Weather Service has warned residents about the potential threat of downed trees and power outages. Last year, all of California was in a drought, but this unusually strong winter has resulted in record-setting snowpack and nearly full reservoirs. Meanwhile, in the southeast... You're looking at where, right here, where the house was sitting, and the uh, steps were right in front of the sidewalk. People are dealing with the aftermath of the vicious weather over the weekend, where more than 20 fatalities were reported. David Brown says his parents were among the victims who were killed while the storm was ravaging Rolling Fork, Mississippi. They're in heaven. Right now, and I was told that they passed away in each other's arms. The Biden administration vows assistance is on the way for those in need. We remain committed to doing everything we can to help those impacted by these storms and help them recover. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Other news this morning, House Republicans plan to deliver a subpoena to Secretary of State Antony Blinken for classified cables related to the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chair Mike McCall says that he will be issuing the first subpoena as chairman. The Texas Republican said he had spoken with Secretary Blinken earlier and was notified the agency would not be turning over so-called dissent cable. According to press reports, the July 2021 communication was written by diplomats at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul shortly before the August 2021 withdrawal. It warned Blinken about the potential fall of Kabul via a special dissent channel. 
The Biden administration is threatening a veto for Republican-led legislation aimed at energy costs. It has been dubbed the, low, the Lower Energy Cost Act. The House of Representatives is expected to take up the bill this week. The GOP-led House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee says it will reform the energy permitting process and boost domestic energy production. But the White House argues it will raise costs for consumers while padding oil and gas company profits. If the bill passes and Biden vetoes it, it would take two-thirds majority vote in the House and Senate to override the veto. 539, 66 degrees. Now that the Fed just raised rates for the ninth time, what should you do with your money now? Maybe bury it in the backyard? When it comes to rising interest rates, it's all about the debt. It's the liabilities that you have. Up next, what financial experts say is the first thing you should do. And outside with live cam, breezy and cooler this morning. Any showers in our forecast? We'll talk to Mike coming up, and we're keeping tabs on a couple of incidents right now. One's at I-10 in Fresno, the other on I-35 and Walnut up in the city of New Braunfels. Lots going on this morning. You're watching GMSA. This month, the Fed raised interest rates for a ninth consecutive time. That means higher borrowing costs for you. This morning, CNN's Shelley Malashi has some suggestions for what to do with your money, whether you're an investor, saver, or borrower. With banking failures making headlines and the Fed raising interest rates, Good afternoon. investors and borrowers are feeling a little jittery, wondering how it could all impact their savings, loans, credit cards, and investments. When it comes to rising interest rates, it's all about the debt. It's the liabilities that you have. So what are some ways to position your hard-earned money to get the most out of those soaring rates, but also protect yourself from the higher costs? The first thing first, experts say tackle credit card debt. So get on a plan to pay off what you owe soon before higher rates kick in. If you've got credit card debt, it's going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more now and in the near future. It's going to put a lot of financial pressure on, on uh, an increasing number of households going forward. If you're looking to buy a home or refinance, higher interest rates could mean banks could make borrowing requirements stricter. Experts say get to work on locking the lowest fixed rate now. Also consider investing in Series I savings bonds. Experts recommend them because it's an inflation protected asset and offers a safe return. But it has some limitations. Among them, you can't invest more than $10,000 a year and can't redeem your bond in the first year. But act quickly. You only have until the end of April to buy and get the current 6.89% rate. If you've got emergency money parked somewhere making less than 1%, you might think about buying an I-bond. Experts say it's good news for savers. Bank rates suggest putting your savings in online high-yield savings accounts. Some are now offering rates as high as 5%. For Consumer Watch, I'm Shelley Malashi. 544, 66 degrees. Are you planning for a nice spring break vacation? Well, up next, why the Federal Aviation Administration is already warning a shortage of air traffic controllers, what that means for millions of vacationers. And if you still haven't gone on spring break yet, let us know. Because oh, yeah. I think most folks well, are done, aren't they? In, in our area, yes, but yeah. I have a Other parts of the country right in New York uh, who hasn't taken spring break yet. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, now, now that makes sense. Yeah. There's 10, 10 at, uh, actually 37 at Hot Wells. We're not showing you one of the big trouble spots right now. 10 and Fresno. We'll take a look coming up. Welcome back. It's 547. Your morning consumer headlines. Mickey Mouse is handing out some not so magical pink slips. Disney CEO Bob Eager says his company will start the first round of layoffs this week. There are three expected rounds, which will ultimately impact about 7,000 employees. That's about 3% of Disney's 220,000 workers across the globe. The second round of layoffs is expected to be larger and is slated for next month. The final round is supposed to happen at some point before the summer. Disney says it is engaged in a multi-billion dollar cost-cutting initiative aimed at streamlining operations. Spring break travel has soared back to normal and renewing worry that more flights could be canceled later this summer. Meltdowns plagued the FAA in January, Southwest over the holidays and industry-wide last summer. The FAA is already warning of a shortage of air traffic controllers that could cause increased delays at New York's three major airports this summer. They're a key air traffic control facility is only at 54 percent staffing. Latest figures from the travel site Hopper show many travelers are concerned about flight disruptions and sounds like they should be.
Yes, they show time now 548, and it looks like a lot of flashing lights out there at I-10 at Fresno. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, the reason why that shot changed is because we have a bigger issue here along I-10 at Fresno. That problem along I-35 at Walnut in New Braunfels has cleared out. We'll get to what traffic looks like there in a moment, but if you are heading out the door eastbound lanes, I-10 at Fresno, we do have a problem that has been reported. Uh, now, earlier, TxDOT has said that this was road debris that was been picked up there, but notice we actually have at least three lanes of traffic blocked off, so we'll have to check with our friends at Transcat again and get some more uh, information, but you can see it has slowed folks down in the area. Again, this is I-10 eastbound, so if you are heading into the downtown area, we have labeled it as road debris. Again, that is because that is what TxDOT reported earlier, but we will have to confirm if that is the case now because it does look like a bigger issue out on the roadway. I-10 eastbound, those lanes are not looking pretty there, guys, but things are looking a lot better over here as we take you back up to New Braunfels, and again, that crash was reported as a major crash, but uh, it has cleared out. So first responders there in New Braunfels worked pretty quickly to get things moving along I-35 southbound at Walnut Avenue. So better news to report there for our friends that are traveling into the downtown area. But giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area back here, bigger scope of it really doesn't show a lot else. The big issue will stay here right at I-10 eastbound, and that's where we're going to keep our eyes until a bigger issue pops up, uh, but we'll be prepared for that. But right now, we want you to be prepared before you head out the door. Again, this is in the eastbound lanes. If you're heading into the downtown area uh, and have to travel in these lanes of traffic, you're going to see some slowdowns. Yes, yes. sir. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. You know how when you go back to like Labor Day, it always seems like the rest of the year, you know, got all the holidays and, mm -hmm. and all that coming up. Same thing as soon as you get Valentine's. Oh, that's you know, true. it just seems like with uh, St. Patrick's Day and then you've got spring uh, break, spring break yeah. and now we're Easter. To Easter's less than two weeks away. That's hard to imagine. Uh, I quick. know the Easter bunny. And with that in mind, look at this beautiful <laughs> cake and web producer Victoria. I don't know if she made this or not. If she did, Super wow. Cute. Did she leave it in the break room? Well, that's the here. Uh, you read my mind. It's gone. Let's I go. already checked. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go check the fridge. I was going to say some oh, bunny's yeah. going to eat it. I was going to say thank you to our co-workers for leaving us leftovers. Uh, go I, check it out. I'll Steven. check it out on the fridge. Yeah. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll oh, I know. didn't check the fridge. I just looked on the I'll counter. I'll go look. I didn't see anything But then there. again, you put food in a newsroom and it's like National Geographic with piranhas. Got <laughs> on. So true. Yeah. It just gets them out. Anyway, that is beautiful, Victoria. Um, I would thank you to everyone else that got to enjoy it. So anyway, uh, thanks for the KZAC Connects picture. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. We're not going to be seeing a, a bunch of sunshine uh, through the weekend, really. Some here and there, but for the most part, it's just going to be on the cloudy side. At least we've got clearer skies down at the surface as far as the, the lower humidity. A few showers and thunderstorms out there in Valverde County. They're trying to work their way off to the east a little bit, as you can see, and they're not going to be moving all that quick. This will be something that we'll start to deal with later on this afternoon as that next system kind of works its way on in here. Low to mid 60s, uh, northern half of the area, and then we've got still 70s down to the south. Much, much drier air is being pumped in on these winds coming in here out of the north in behind the front that moved through right on schedule in the overnight hours. Did produce a couple of showers and even some stronger thunderstorms scattered about the area. We do have gusts right now to 21. Anything, Stephen? Uh, it was way too crowded in there for me to look, so uh, I did not okay. see anything. Crowded. Everyone's lunch boxes. Uh, oh, oh, the fridge. Yeah, everyone, I don't Sorry, want to no left over cake for us. <laughs> uh, breezy conditions right now, gusty conditions, and that's going to be the case all day long. I've got a 10% chance that leftover little sprinkle here or there, especially off to the east, not any big deal. And then temperatures make it up to the uh, mid upper 60s. So we cool down a few degrees and then only bounce back to roughly where we are right now at noon and then 70 for a high temperature. And then here's the chance for a couple of more showers to work their way in here later on this afternoon. So this computer model has this kind of just sitting out there along the Rio Grande and that's going to be the case through late morning and then going into afternoon hours. Then we start to see a few of these showers trying to sort of work their way and develop further to the east and this batch of rain is going to be coming through here right around dinner time. Even a couple of thunderstorms around uh, as far as rainfall amounts don't count on a whole lot. There may be a couple little isolated spots where you see a decent downpour, but again, this is not going to be any big, big rain event later on today. And then we do have another chance of rain a couple days from now. Again, it's not going to be a huge deal. 67 degrees today at noon. Windy conditions. It's going to stay breezy all day long with winds gusting 15, 25 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that. I should say sustained 15 to 25 gusting on top of that. Windy, a couple of showers developing this afternoon. 
and then on into the evening hours. A couple of leftovers are going to be possible tomorrow morning. It is going to be cooler tomorrow down to 52 degrees and then only up to 65. So where we are right now, That'll be the high temperature, even cooler than that tomorrow. Then back to 78 on Thursday. A couple more showers or even a thunderstorm or two. Humidity starts to come back in here. 85 on Friday. A little bit of sunshine Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even Monday. We will get a drop in the humidity on Saturday temporarily, but then back to the hum hot and humid conditions Sunday, Monday. All right, we'll get ready for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Time now, 554, 66 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3, 4, 2, 7, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 0, 3, 9, 9, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 5, 13, 19, 24, 27, Texas 2 Step 7, 23, 28, 35, and the bonus ball 12. And Powerball 19, 26, 36, 43, 58, Powerball 14, Power Play 3. A Reagan High School graduate going to Hollywood. Judges gave a golden ticket to Dawson Rice, who uses the stage name Dawson Wayne. If you miss his audition, you're not alone. That's because his audition did not air. But his mom confirmed to KSAT he made it to Hollywood. Read more about his musical journey over on KSAT.com. American Idol airs Sunday night at 7, right here on KSAT 12. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, Harlandale ISD closing four elementary schools. We'll look at why and which ones are shutting down. Plus, how you can turn your unused dining room into a space that you love. Some creative ideas to get things going. And checking trans guys is one of the trouble spots that Stephen Cavazos is monitoring. 10 and Fresno will be right back.